Hello, I'm Derek Wheatley and welcome to episode 40 of the Weekly Weekly Podcast. Uh, first of all, thank you for your support. Thanks a million for sending your questions in. I know I was kind of badgering you, um, kind of the week leading up to it. And uh, I kind of just wanted to make sure I had enough. And then it turned out in the end that I had loads and loads and probably... I didn't count them all up, but probably around 80 uh, questions, which is pretty insane and um, very grateful for that. I'm not going to be able to answer them all because I don't want the question, uh, the episode to run, you know, for about three hours. So I rounded it up to, to 50. I rounded it down to 50, I should say. Um, I, there's a great variety, and that, that was the whole point, is to get as much variety as we could, whether it was about mental health, whether it was about, you know, yeah, music, films, uh, anything really. And he, uh, he pulled it off. So hopefully I can answer them to your satisfaction. Um, so I'd like to thank Michelle Jinx for last week's, last week's episode. It was great crack. Um, the Zoom thing, which was causing me all sorts of sleepless nights, uh, went very well. And I'm, I was delighted with the end result after lots of anxiety. Um, so that was mainly down to Michelle, let's face it. Um, she was a very interesting guest and answered some of my all right questions, some pretty dumb questions, but she uh, she handled them very well and was not patronizing to me in any way, which was great. We're still doing the Facebook Live, as you know. It's on a Sunday evening. Um, I'm sharing some, I'm kind of sharing a bit more news about what's to come on that rather than just, I suppose, like what I'm watching and what I've been reading and listening to, things like that. Um, it makes more sense to do it that way, I think, um, because it kind of creates more of a, I suppose, more of an interest going forward in what we're, what we're trying to do and, you know, that was, that's the whole point in the, in the podcast. Um, I was having some very annoying troubles with the microphone before this, um, before I start recording this and it's basically without boring you with the technicalities of it all that the bar on the screen doesn't look like the volume is very high so hopefully I can fix that um, afterwards it sounds okay in my uh, headphones so um, I'm sure it will be but it, it, there's like a restriction on the volume and it's I can't figure it out because I don't know anything about these things and it's bugging me so hopefully I can sort it out after recording anyway it's time to get into the questions um, I I kind of mixed them between. There was a groupie that sent the questions. Um, you know, listeners who've been with us a while and newer listeners who've joined us uh, more recently. And I tried to mix it between who asked it, and then some people asked more than others. And I mix it up anyway. Let's let's get into it. Um, so the first question is from my ma, and it's um favorite subject at school now. I didn't really have to think long and hard about this. History was my favourite subject at school. Um, the only thing, the problem with history, you know, is the specific dates. And I know people kind of had the same issue with history as I did. I loved learning about the events, but when it came to learning the actual dates and the years, well, not so much the years, but the specific dates, that's where I got a bit muddled up. Um, I will say in history, it was the, the I got the best um, result in my leaving in history. And that obviously makes sense, being that I liked it. I had this teacher called uh, Lara McGuinness, um, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago, but he was an incredible teacher. And he was one of those teachers that really got you, his enthusiasm in the subject really got you into the subject, you know. And I think that added a lot to it. Um, so history, uh, I, I liked English as well, actually. Um, certain parts, though, I, I think I've kind of fell down the poetry, I'll be honest. But you know, like even Shakespeare, things like that was very interesting to me, even though I couldn't understand a word of it. It had to be like translated for me by the teacher into modern English. Um, so English was up there too, but history would be would be my, my favourite. Um the next question comes from Emma. What song are your what sorry, what songs are your guilty pleasures? So there's a couple that came into my mind straight away. Toxic by Britney Spears. I'm not really guilty about them. I talked about this with films, actually, with Guilty Pleasures. It's not really something that I'm guilty about anymore. I may, I may have been, when I was uh, younger, being hiding some of my uh, uh, songs that I liked more um, and didn't want to sh uh, share with others. So Toxic by Britney Spears was straight in there. Uh, we have Beautiful by um, Christina Aguilera. Kind of hitting a kind of a tone here, aren't we, with the, the types of singers? Um, 
Do you know what? Actually, another one. And um, you might, you obviously remember the band Hanson. It's not in Bop, all right. But they had a song called "Where's the Love," and I used to go down. Uh, MTV at the time was showing a lot of uh, this. I suppose is around like mid to late nineties, and they were showing music mostly. It wasn't so much about you know what they show now. And they used to show "Where's the Love" by Hanson, and it might have been their second or third single, maybe. And I, uh, I thought it was a great song, but I was so embarrassed or show was guilty, I guess, at the time. I recorded it onto a VHS, and um, along with other whatever music videos I had on it, cooler ones. And I, and I was afraid to get my my brothers caught me uh, listening to this because we've had incidents in the past where my brothers were listening to stuff that were, you know, were guilty to them. They felt guilty about. So yeah, Where's the Love by Hanson? I used to really like that song. I haven't listened to it in a long time, actually. It just popped into my head. My Sacrifice by Creed. Okay, so... I'm... St I, this may be the only one I'm embarrassed about. Because Creed were this... Oh, I don't know. To me, they were this... This Christian rock... Cheesy, you know, fist-clenching... Arse-clenching... <laughs> kind of... They were... <sighs> To me, they were everything that was wrong with rock at the time they were out, which was maybe the... But I get these, see, like the dates about history. The early 2000s, and the guy, the singer was just really... Oh, he was very... There was something about him that kind of bothered me. But yeah, they brought out My Sacrifice, and I thought, actually, I quite like that song. And that's kind of annoying. And I, as far as I remember, he did this, the crucifix pose in the video, but I might be wrong with that. He did it in a video. And then... A, so a song that nobody knows. Well, they do, but they, I, I, I talk about it. We remember Mickey Joe Hart, right? He he was in the, the Eurovision for Ireland, and he did um he did a song. What's it? We got the world tonight. It's not that song, by the way. And um, he he released a song. I was working in in a in a place in town, uh, a, like a manufacturing uh, place in town, uh, chemical or medical device, chemical device, medical device. And they had the radio on all the time. And there was this song with Mickey Joe Hart called uh, Sound of the Summer. And it's always kind of stuck in my head. And I've never thought of even going into YouTube and looking it up or anything. And I did the other day. And uh, there it was. And it's actually not as good as I remember. But at the time when it was out, I was like, oh, I like this song. But I can't let anyone know. So there's five. Uh, it's hard to, to, to name... You know, I could name more than that, but I, I said I'd leave it at five. So thank you very much for your question, Emma. Um, we've got a question from Heather. Is Batman an actual superhero or just a rich man with gadgets? <coughs> Excuse me. He's he's clearly just a rich man with gadgets. Um, if we're going to go by the, you know, definition of a superhero, there's something super about them. He doesn't have any superpowers. Therefore, he's a... He, he could be all a hero he could be called someone who's got mental health problems I mean he's going around dressed up as a bat but he's um yeah he to me he's just a guy in it with some gadgets who's who's um who's too much time in his hands I don't know what the Wayne Industries does is that what it's called um but you know but I'm on your side Heather I know you mentioned that Martin thinks he's a superhero but you know I rarely agree with anything that Martin says so I'm going to go with a rich man with gadgets uh, who may need to talk to someone. Um, Nicola asks, tea or coffee? Always tea. Coffee makes me anxious, more anxious, I should say, than than I would be uh, normally be, which is saying something. And there's something about the aftertaste of coffee that I don't, I've not really liked. It's It just stays too long. Um, coffee breath is a real thing. <laughs> um, but for me, tea is gorgeous, and I I'd maybe have four cups of tea a day, and I love it. Um, I, I, it's very relaxing I love a cup of tea in the morning and it doesn't make me anxious so I'm going to go with tea thank you very much number uh, 5 we've got a question from Kaylee. Um, advice, an advice for starting a podcast or similar projects ok so so what I've written down here I've, I have taken notes I'm not just answering off the cup because I want to get the questions or I want to get the answers right I think the thing is that you know what you want to say, okay? So that's, for, first of all, uh, it, I suppose that kind of applies to podcasts, but it can apply to many different projects. Know what you're doing for, like what you want to say, what your mes message is that you're going to put put across. Believe in yourself. Um, I know this is cliche, and I always say about cliches, well, many people say it about cliches, where they say, you know, they're cliches for a reason. 
believe in yourself and what you're going to do you know there's someone out there who will listen or watch or whatever whatever the project is read um you are if you are going to go ahead with something you can kind of think that it's the right if you've thought of it or thought it through and you're going to do it it's the right decision for you then so believe in yourself and believe that you're going to be able to do it uh, to the best of your abilities um you know nobody nobody should go into a project thinking this is going to be the best podcast ever because it's it's a silly um idea and who judges that you know um and surround yourself with positive supporting people and um, whether it's your your partner your parents your family um friends surround yourself with the right people not the people who are going to chop you down saying sure what would you know about that like that's a silly thing for you to do there's people out there more qualified blah blah there's many reasons why people can come up with a, an excuse for you not to do it you're doing it for the right reasons you've thought it through um it's nice to have some positive kind of affirmation confirmation of why you're doing it from from loved ones um and they're the ones you should be listening and not to the ones who are it's easy to kind of sit on the outside and go well this is not right for you but just do it if you think of doing something kaylee you do it you have my support and i'm sure you have many many people's support and thank you very much for the question joshua he makes his first appearance i think he's on it again um what things are you finding helpful during the lockdown to sustain good mental health um so I have been texting people like Josh to stay in re like a kind of relative normality of I, I don't really I try not to text Josh about the lockdown or about all of the stuff that we're trying to avoid because I mean if we stay in that bubble if we keep texting this you know loved ones or friends about all the, you know god this is this is taking it out of me and uh, and you know when's this going to be end and look we know what we're we know the time we know that it's a six weeks thing that's confirmed we don't need to kind of keep on going over it so i will text josh and i will text other people about other things completely different things that are separate from from um the things that might be getting me down so i do i text uh, i text josh um i read a lot because again it's nothing to do with um the coronavirus or lockdown anything like that it's fiction or it's non-fiction but it's separate from that um i look i run which is great for me i love it i uh watch films i moan and that's all right to moan um i don't tend to i'm not moaning about the things that are set you know i'm not moaning about a uh a level five um a lockdown it's you know that's i'm moaning about silly things and like this is Anne who has to put up with this for the most part um and Anne can moan with me and it's all right to moan you know feel that you can let things out like that that's all right um it helps me uh i turn off the news at times which is very important if you live in a 24-hour cycle of news and it's you know if you're watching sky news or you're watching uh, like rte news now and it's just a constant bombardment that's not good for you like at all it never is it's it, nothing to do with the uh, nothing to do with the virus or anything like that. it's just not good for you so just avoid that turning off at times put on something a bit lighter and being creative you know whether it's it's mostly to do with the podcast and what I'm thinking of doing in the future with the podcast. That's the creativity that I have now. But, you know, I could sit down and write something. Um, you know, you don't have to be... You don't have to be someone who's done it before. You can stick some paint on a piece of paper. You can... Do, you, there's lots of, way to be, lots of ways to be creative. Mind way is just what I'm doing at the moment. And this podcast is keeping me... Keeping me uh, sane, you know, the idea that it rolls around so quickly. The weekly deal is it rolls around every week. And, you know, I write the episodes. I think, who do I want to have on? I chat to people on Instagram about coming on. I, you know, I've got a list of people coming on. I'm chancing my arm with other people trying to get them on. And that's takes up so much of my time. And then I've got the Sunday segments, which I write uh, for. And maybe I've tried, I haven't done the song thing in a while, but I could do that again there's so much to do with the podcast and that's keeping me sane and the fact that people are um 
the people are actually listening to it is keeping me saying because I'm getting some great feedback and I mean it's not why I do it but it's a it's a it's a lovely byproduct of of, uh, of doing it so uh, I hope that answers your question Josh actually sorry Josh also put in a little addendum at the bottom where he said that you know treat yourself and he's treated himself to Disney plus he's got his little lad Oscar um you know and obviously the whole family Martha there too this so they have Disney plus now that's a little treat you can do that you know get a subscription and something you know spend don't go overboard but spend a little money a little bit of money on something that you wouldn't normally have just to kind of get you through the 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 kind of days and weeks so thank you for your question josh um my auntie mia text or sent us a message to say uh, do you find cbd helpful um dosage and how often do you take it so i i've tried i've tried three different dosage uh dosages of uh, cbd and it's like three percent five percent and ten percent and the three and five percent weren't great I, I obviously you take more drops um and i didn't really find them that good i find you know i find them okay i don't know if it was a placebo kind of effect or not so when i went up to, uh, my mom got me some ten percent stuff up in up in dublin and so i was using that and I did actually find that helpful and I, I only use it before I go training because I do find I can be quite anxious and stressed out uh, when I'm going training and so that that's that's when I decide this is the only time I really need it and um, I take like four drops of the 10% it helps a lot again it's you know placebo effects are, are things that w i've talked about in the podcast and i've had guests talking about and the the funny thing is like if it's a if it's just a placebo effect with the cbd oil well so what then it's if it's helping it's it's still an effect so i i would recommend it if people ask me about cbd and there's different ways of taking it but i find the drops i'm not going to start smoking um i tried one um one joint of, of cbd and it was just so hard on my chest that was the problem i mean it worked it probably worked better than the drops but it was just too hard on my chest and i didn't want to get into that side of things again so i would recommend cbd for sure thank you Mia, for the question martin uh what is your favorite thing about jujitsu um it it's the i guess it's the way it takes me out of myself um like the, if i'm going through really tough times and you know there's there's lots of positives about it and there's meeting people and going in and doing you know training and being active and all those things are great but it does take me it takes me out of myself we talk about being on the mats and not having the time i think i spoke to kieran uh, davern about this not having the time to think you know about your anxieties and your your worries and you're feeling down you're in a low you're in a high it, you don't have time when someone's trying to strangle you it does for those five minutes take you out of yourself and uh yeah, I, I would definitely say that's my, my favorite thing about jiu-jitsu. Yeah, Tracy asks, Blur or Oasis? Bit of, you know, a bit of an in-joke when it comes to 90s music. Uh, it was always Blur for me. The first band I ever saw live, um, I prefer their style of music. I prefer the, the lyricism. I think they're better songwriters than, the Gall than, than Noel Gallagher. I think Noel Gallagher was quite well he was full of great songs at the beginning from the first two albums to the, through their b-sides at the time but it dried up very quickly and i think blur were more sustainable they changed their music around a little bit and uh, uh, the be better songwriter i uh, like the kind of kinks kind of you know references and way he writes songs so yeah it would always be a blur on that one um, um, sorry, not Martin. Uh, Mark uh, asks a, an old friend. Mark uh, Samuels asks, films dubbed or subtitles? Never dubbed, ever dubbed. Cannot stand dubbed films. Will not watch them. Netflix has a, this terrible idea that we should uh, we should be watching these subtitles films because if it's a, if it's a foreign language film and it comes on Netflix, you're immediately shown the sub it's immediately in dubbed you know you have to go out of it go into the settings and change it to subtitles i don't know why they have it set like that but the dubbed is awful i cannot i cannot describe how bad it is there was this great quote from uh bong joon ho who won a few oscars for parasite including best picture last year and he says once you overcome the one inch uh hold on let me see if i can it's very it's quite dark in this room this is tuesday morning 
uh, about seven o'clock so it's still quite dark so he says once you overcome the one inch barrier of subtitle you will be introduced to so many more amazing films and that is true he's a he's a brilliant filmmaker and he's not wrong there so yeah always subtitles um don't be lazy it's only a bit of reading <laughs> um anita do things happen for a reason uh i don't believe they do anita um i think it's more complicated than that um we have to like build and shape things and it's like uh i suppose like the way we have to build and shape things in, in a kind of labyrinth of changing circumstances um and like uh like endless coincidences that's that's the way i see it um you know and uh, that that's another thing other people are doing the same thing which causes like this chaos and and disruption in everybody's life so i don't think things happen for a reason i certainly think that we work work ways to find the, the place we want to go and i think people are doing the same all the time and for things to happen for a reason i think it's just too neat if you know what i mean so that's look that's just me maybe things have you know people i know people a lot of people have said it that things happen for a reason and good on them and if they think that's the case then who am i to uh, say they're wrong uh, azura asks if you were a breed of dog what would you be and this is this is funny because my favorite dogs are pogs and french bulldogs always right but they're too cute to be me i don't i not cute i've never been described as cute by anything or anyone or you know it's just any being so uh i would be i'd say something of less frills i would maybe a labrador intelligent with a fine coat that's what i say that's what I, yeah i'm gonna go with labrador i had a couple of options but intelligent with a fine coat that's me labrador i'm taking it calling myself intelligence is you know i just it's bad but i have to um <laughs> um my mom asks uh favorite quiz show i think a uh, two answers pointless for fun because it's good crack the, the hosts are brilliant um and i get some stuff right in it you know that's always important and then that's what it leads me to my second part of this uni university challenge for glory because i get about an average of two questions right in university challenge sorry university challenge an episode and when you get a question right on university challenge you have earned it and you celebrate and it feels like such a victory so th there's my two answers for that um we have Jur who asks favorite movie genre and why with examples so it's always it's always drama for me uh, i've always kind of watched real life taking place on screen you know things that we can relate to uh, the usual ups and downs with all the bits in the middle um i find i find kind of comfort in that um kind of comfort in the fact that the creators have seen some things that uh, that i may have in my life um things that i may have been through like i love things like like i haven't been through all these things but i love films like phantom thread and um, moonlight one of my favorite films in the last few years suddenly last summer slightly an older film but amazing uh the awful truth that's going back to the 40s uh five easy pieces you know just lives being lived on screen it's always been drama films that i've uh, found more interesting and i know uh juror isn't the kind of the crime kind of thing and i i enjoy them too but i think there's so many bad ones that i've seen and i suppose there's look there's so many bad dramas but there's more dramas out there i suppose that it's, it's easier to uh i suppose it's easier for me to dismiss the crime thing if it's not my favorite um so yeah drama for me um because that's my life uh sean asks even though bipolar is a chemical reaction do you think it can be overcome and if so how and if not why so this is kind of a tough question for me sean because uh i'm not you know i'm not a medical person or a scientist but my opinion would be i don't think people can overcome it but they can certainly keep it in check um with a lot of effort that's not to say it's easy to do uh, i mean that's not to say that there's levels if there's if there's bipolar one there's bipolar two as well so that's another thing to, to take into uh, uh consideration but i think like diet uh, sleep you know routines uh, exercise medication for some some people are not into it and that's fine um some and all of those things are necessary uh, the task can kind of seem gargantuan at times to people but it can be done uh with all the hard work and support that you can get um 
I can only go from what medical experts say about it um, not being achievable to overcome. I don't know how uh, something like that is it a chemical imbalance can be overcome naturally, um, you know, without medication. Now, I'm not someone who's going to push medication down someone's throat, literally. Um, but I think it's worked for me. Um, that's what's important to me. And I do think that we have to find our own way. And I know uh, people will remember Sean, Sean Keyes, this is who was on, uh, talking about uh, borderline personality disorder and how he's overcome it. And, uh, you know, uh, I have great admiration and respect for Sean. And he talks so well about it. And he's such a... Uh, he, he has such a knowledge of the subject and, and of, of mental health in general and how we can uh, we can change it um that i kind of bound i buy i bow down to a superior knowledge i should say um but for me yeah I, this is the way that i've had to go but i'm not like i can't obviously sit here and say no it can't it can't be done i just don't know how it could be done so i hope that answers your question john i'm sorry if it's not more scientific but it's me uh cormac asks controlling the controllables you have physic sorry you have physical activity covered do you put the same amount of effort into your diet and sleeping patterns um absolutely uh cormac sleeping patterns are the most important thing for me uh because it's not about to me it's about going to bed and getting up at the same time if you don't get the right, right amount of sleep in between it's 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 not the end of the world. Now, I mean, if you lose a half an hour and an hour, I'm not talking about if you don't sleep at all. But yeah, sleeping patterns to me are very important to go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time every morning. And some people have found that quite difficult that I'm talking about people who have got out with. Um, that's that's quite difficult difficult because then, you know, everybody's got different patterns and some people like being up late and some people don't like getting up early and there's, there's lots of variables on all that. So... Yeah, I think I think sleeping pattern for me is huge. Diet is something that I'm still working on. I'm I'm, al I'm always working on. I'm trying not to eat as much sugar as I used to. Um, I, I I try to my my diet has been very good the last three months or so. I lost six kg as I mentioned before. Um, I got down to a nice weight. I'm kind of keeping it, trying to keep it level at the moment. I'm not. I don't want to lose any more. And I'm eating a lot more vegetable and I'm eating rice and cut out as I say cut out sweets and it's. There's so many variables on it, um, Cormac, that I think you have to find the the most important things for you. You know, um, and I know you exercise yourself. I don't know about your your sleep and your and your um, and your diet, but I think it's things we're we're all kind of working on those things in general. Anyway, I mean, whether you have mental uh, health problems or not, so for me, keep all those things in check. They all work together, and uh, yeah, keep going. That's all I can do. Um, we got a question from Oshin, former guest. One tip to someone who's going to the gym but has too much anxiety. Uh, I, look, if you can bring a friend, that that's amazing. You know, if a, if a friend will come into you, I'm I'm going to talk about kind of the gym that I go to, so a CrossFit gym where you're going to be interacting with people because you can go into other gyms and hotels or wherever they are, and it's you know it's just you. But yeah, I think bring a friend. And if if you do not have a friend, um, what I did, and this was just good instinct at the time, what I did was I I decided to bring Martin and say, explain my situation, and I told him exactly what what you know what it was with my mental health. Um, you know, I was bipolar too. I had a lot of anxiety. I was very worried about coming in, and you know, Martin was cool about it. He just said, "Look, yeah, people have been like that." Um, and this is how we've, you know, we kind of, he treated me the same as everyone else, okay? Um, but the only difference was, th it was from my side of things that had changed then. It wasn't me worrying about, you know, oh God, what if someone, you know, what if we, I have to talk to someone, I'm backed into a corner, blah, blah, blah. It was just, Martin knew, I knew he knew, and then it had changed my perspective of going in. So talk to the coach, bring a friend if you can, if you can't, you know. Do what do follow the advice that's given to you from this medical professional. Um, no, but yeah, it's it's it is tough, but uh, I think talk to the coach is a good one. And you know, like Oshin is a coach now as well. You know, and I I think that's the great thing about uh, someone like Oshin who's who's a young lad, but 
sorry, no disrespect, a young man, <laughs> and uh, but he's he's in tune with all that kind of stuff. And if you spoke to someone like Ushin, and if you spoke to Martin, it'd be off your chest, and they will make you realise that it's nothing. So, I hope that answers the question. Fusion Training Centre, Munsland, Athlone. A place to train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you wish to join the team, find us on Facebook at Fusion Training Centre or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Centre. Train like a warrior. It'll be back in a few weeks, folks. Um, so get in there when, re when it reopens. Flock to it. You know, January's coming too and everybody wants to set off on a on a, a new routine in January. Fusion's one of those places where you'll go and it's not going to be just at four weeks and you give up. You'll go in, you'll like it, you'll enjoy the community, you'll enjoy the crack, the coaches are great, the people there are great. There's a list of things that you can do in there. Keep it in mind. Um, so after I'd finished doing, writing out the questions uh, neatly, my younger brother Simon sent me a message, and uh, so he uh, he said, um, "Can I can I get my questions in?" And I said, "Yes, you can." So I'm going to ask Simon's all in a row here. Um, so Simon's first question was a great one: all time Arsenal eleven in your supporting life. So here we go, lads. It wasn't that hard actually. There was one or two places where I was like, "I'm not too sure," but some of them were uh, you know given. So in goal, David Seaman. Right back Lee Dixon, left back Ashley Cole, unfortunately. Um, uh, centre backs Tony Adam Adams and Sol Campbell. Um, uh, we've got in the centre midfield Patrick Vieira and Sesh Fabregas. On the left wing we have Perez. On the right wing we had Lumberg. He was that was the only position that was tricky because Lumberg wasn't technically a brilliant player, but he was a very important player, a big game player, scored a lot of goals. I was going to switch it around, so I was going to put Perez on the on the right because he was right footed, and Overmars on the left. But I think Lumberg did more for Arsenal. Um, and up front, I mean, this is the easiest two you can get: uh, Thierry Henry and also the best player I've ever seen play for Arsenal, Dennis Bergkamp. Uh, I gave a five a five uh, man bench, so we have Jens Lehmann, Martin Keown, Emmanuel Betty, Mark Overmars, and Ian Wright. Uh, one of my all-time heroes. Van Persie nearly made it, but I don't know. I could only have two snakes on the team, and Cole got in a hit. <laughs> um, Simon also asks, favourite Arnold Schwarzenegger film? Now, he, he lads, right? This is one here. Someone else asked me about Adam Sandler films before. Why don't you ask me the favourite Joaquin Phoenix film? Or, you know, favourite Gene Hackman film? Something like that, but no. But yeah, it's clear. Look, Simon, it's... Terminator 2 is the right answer, surely for everyone. Um, I have a lot of memories with my, my two brothers watching Terminator 2 many times, uh, being amazed by the special effects at the time. Uh, it was great. We know Arnold Schwarzenegger is not a great actor, but he was a, he was a, a movie star, an action hero, and uh, it's always going to be Terminator 2. I like Terminator, the original Terminator is brilliant too, but Terminator 2 is just, yeah, just a cut above. Simon asks, uh, yeah. <laughs> Your um, wrestling finishing move, uh, uh, this might not make any sense to people, but I'd, I'd love to be good at double leg takedowns in jiu-jitsu. I'm not. I have a terrible knee that I can't actually shoot on, so I can't do a double leg. But as I drive them into the mats, the woozy opponent does not see the dar darse choke coming on. And that's my thing, a darse choke. I love it. If you don't know what a darse choke is, just look it up. It's uh, it's not a nice thing to get caught in. I've been caught in them many times, but it's just something I, I quite like doing. So I hope that answers your questions well, Simon, and thank you very much for sending them in. I very much appreciate it. Um, Drajan asks, who do I speak to about starting my own business? Um, in He wants to do uh, outdoor activities. Do you know, Drajan, I would say I speak to Martin about it. Uh, you know, I don't have a business. I not sure if I could handle it to be honest which I think the stress would do me in um, but but I would say you know to talk to someone who knows what they're talking about you know someone who has started a business um, uh, Martin not only has he started a business he would know people who also have started a business maybe he would know people someone in that that field you know of outdoor activities 
who can give you some tips, who can give you, um, you know, just business advice in general, who can um, maybe tell you more about what the grants that are out there. Um, so I, I just think, speak to the people who are in it. You know, there's no point in me uh, in telling you anything, anything, uh, trying to tell you anything, you know, kind of intelligent sounding but it's literally i i find that anytime you have something that you want to do and if you know people obviously drajan is if you don't people who don't know he trains with us just talk to martin about it i think that's the best way forward i hope that answers your question i'm sorry i can't be more detailed on it um but i would be if it was me i would be speaking to the people who, who are in the know um nicola asks your biggest fear oh hold on did i lose my page oh, i lost my page so many notes so many notes i couldn't believe how many notes i had to take compared to when i'm just asking other people questions um so yeah my biggest fear is height uh and bananas height is obvious okay people think bananas is like everybody laughs and says haha it's very funny you know derek is doesn't like bananas I, I it's, it's not about not liking bananas it's about hating them and it's about hating everything about them shape color taste texture those stringy little bits that come off the little black dots in it it everything about a banana is disgusting the way it changes it goes from yellow to green or black you know i wouldn't say i have a fear of them but i'm cl it's close to it and i know jack white of the white stripes actually has a phobia of bananas and I'm, I'm i'm getting there um uh nicola asks is that yeah sorry nick ask are you actively dating dur during the pandemic if so how have you uh, been finding the dating pool probably the question i've dreading most right so here's the thing i find with with, with during this pand pandemic thing right i'm i'm i've been talking to people obviously and it, that's it's fine um you know it's it's also something that it's also quite noteworthy that it's not something to get your hopes up on because we don't know do we like how can you be properly dating someone in in the environment that we're in at the moment it's it's near on impossible to do but i think it's good to talk to people and you know try to build some sort of rapport with people um like nicola would have seen me on on tinder i'm not on it now but you know obviously when it was a week or two ago i would have been on it but maybe a bit longer but I think the, the i suppose my kind of thing about it now is like there's not really a path to anything you know um you know if we if we get through this next few weeks when we get through this next few weeks it's into christmas and then christmas is like the worst time to try, try and start um you know meeting up with people because people are so busy in general uh and then it goes into january and it's like ah oh, people have no money in january so it's like here's me painting a beautiful picture of the world uh but you know i have talked i've been talking to someone and you know i don't know what it what it is um what it's going to be but i can only and i will say right i i will say and if people know this and people may not know this um dating sites for men and women are entirely entirely separate things because there's a lot of creeps out there and i this is first time like this is what i've been told by uh by women on the on the apps like that you know there's a lot of men out there who are really just creeps and they're not making life easy for for women online trying to date so i think the 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 fact that men have it quite well a lot a lot easier on those apps um and i i i think the apps are fine sometimes i feel that what am i doing in this it's not good for my mental health um i'm swiping and i'm feeling bad about swiping people i don't know it's just like yeah judging t entirely on looks uh, it just it doesn't feel right but i hope that answers the question so uh am i dating no because i it's not uh, possible at the moment but am i i'm st i'm talking to people and trying to be remain active is the best way of putting it um thank you for your question even though i dreaded it um so my mom asked which piece of beatles memorabilia would you like to own well that that's she did she wouldn't let me include include the imagine piano which i actually saw over in liverpool in a museum that's not a Beatles memorabilia though, because that was John Lennon. So that's man just being picky there. Uh, it would be Harrison's George Harrison's twelve string Rickenbacker or McCartney's fa famous Hofner bass. It'd be either one of those. It would have to be a guitar of some sort, you know. Kaylee, who is your favorite MMA fighter? This is probably a boring answer, Kaylee, but yeah, uh, Khabib. 
uh, Nurmagomedov is easily my favorite he has been since i kind of first saw him fighting i think the first time i saw him properly was against uh edison barboza when he just scared the life out of barboza um he retired there recently uh, which is sad because he's so good uh but uh amanda nunez is right up there too she's absolutely class uh greatest of all time maybe i mean it's hard to argue with that Maybe the two of those are the greatest of all time. Um, another one of mine is Ashleen Daly, and I say that because she will be on the show in a few weeks. <laughs> no, I'm a, I, look. Uh, the thing about Ashleen Daly is like Irish fighter in the UFC, first female black belt in Ireland. I mean, what's there not to admire and respect? And obviously, fair play to her for kind of saying she'd come on the show because we're very excited about having her on, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, thank you for the question, Kaylee. Um, Cormac asks, after you posted your short stories, you dropped off social media for a while. Was it difficult to stop? What are your thoughts on the impact of social media on mental health? And has your view changed having seen the positive side and the impact you have had? Okay. So, no. For me, it wasn't difficult to drop off. At the time, uh, I was having a couple of, there was a couple of trolls, we'll say, uh, commenting on my posts all the time. And... There weren't like trolls that I didn't know. It was people I did know, and I was like, you know, I know there's an unfollow and all that. I'm not even sure there was an unfollow at the time. But certainly, like, oh, what do I know about the, the ins and outs of Facebook? But I wasn't aware that there was an unfollow at the time, we'll say. So it was really bad for my mental health to stay on it. And it was really getting me down. And I thought, I'll just cut it out. And like I say, it wasn't hard to do because it removed that negativity, you know, and I didn't have to worry about that. Um, did I miss out on some stuff? Probably, but it wasn't the end of the world. Um, I think I think social imp social media can have a powerful impact uh, for some um, some like great a great great impact, and then some terrible. And you need to know the the unfollow button. Like I said, you need to friend the right people. You need to avoid the constant like dribble of negative news cycles. You know, if there's someone constantly putting up negativity or putting up like views that you do not agree with and you're like oh god here we go again it's you know like it may be an anti-mask or something now just for an example just don't follow them that's the easiest uh, and the best thing you can do you're not going to miss out on anything that's the old thing we always think we're going to miss out on something if we block people or unfollow people you really won't all you'll miss out on is negative stuff so well there you will miss out on something then but you know what i mean you'll only miss out on negative stuff that you can do without anyway so yes hit the unfollow button stay in a good place um surround yourself with the good people on there uh since i set up the podcast pages i've been it's like nothing but kind of beautiful messages and support of and the people out there and you know like we've been we've been fortunate like to not get any trolls um so it's been very joyful and i think that's the like you were saying i think that's the the thing about um mental health where it's or sorry about social me media um that it can be a positive thing but a lot of the time you have to work for it which is annoying because if you're not the one spreading all the stuff you feel like well why do i have to do it that's just the way it is you know it's like in real life if someone's around you that's all the time being negative and uh, dragging you down and making you feel like you know making you feel terrible and you have to be the one you have to be the one that's turned around and cut that out of your life so do it it's the best thing um so Cormac thank you very much for your question appreciate it uh, Heather asks where do you see the podcast this time next year what is the ultimate goal non-profit um, uh, you know putting some money back into the podcast and the rest of it to uh, a charity of our choice mental health charity um, you know I'd like to get some merch we'll get some merchandise up to sell and we'll give the profits to um to mental health charity and to bernardos um we just want it to be like interesting you know we want interesting people on knowledgeable people we want a great mixture of people um from all different fields uh to come on and chat about everything and just for me to learn is so good and for for the listeners to learn and to be more aware of what we can do to help people with mental health you know we give out about Oh, I do. Um, no, we give out about the kind of how the the health uh, system is run in the country and how it needs more money and how it needs more staff and facilities and all these things. 
But like all we can do at the moment is create our own little uh, support groups. And I kind of want to do that with this podcast to make it into a, a large support community. Like you can see we have a community going now with all these people who sent these questions in and all these people listening. But like make it bigger, uh, more people listening and for the conversation to continue on here and outside of here. Um, that That's the goal. So, um, Anita asks, what song comes on next on your good mood playlist? Um, I, I found when I was doing these that I had to do more than one because it's just it just the way it is if you're watching on my sunday uh live stream uh i had moving on up by the primal screenplay and that was why it was playing because that came up the first song that came up was girls just want to have fun uh cindy lauper because it's just a banger and uh shiny happy people by rem again what we say about cliches but god damn it that's a catchy song um so they're my three um so we have a question from Mark. Music or films? You have to pick one. That was such a tough question, actually. It's probably the hardest question of all. But um, it has to be music. But it was a horrible question to answer. Because I, I, people know how many film, how much films I watch and how much I love films. But music has been there longer. And it's always there to cheer me up. Uh, it's always it's always by my side. And I just, yeah, it had to be music. But, like, that's such a... Imagine not being able to watch films anymore. That that would be heartbreaking. Um, Paul asks... Com he compliments the show on being uh, the one good thing to come out to 2020. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate that. How is Pierce doing? And does he listen to the show? Pierce is in fine form. Um, I'm recording this on... Uh, Tuesday morning, the morning of the U.S. election, Pierce has been really dug deep in the in the election. Um, I kind of want Biden to win for Pierce more than in the world at this stage. Um, for him, because you know he, like everybody else, is a big has a big problem with Trump. Um, but he, yeah, I can say he listens on the week every week. The day it comes out, um, I'm very lucky to say that, and uh, my mom listens the morning it comes out when she goes for her walk and it it makes me very happy to have them as as um supports there um who will tell me uh how much they like the podcast and the guest and whoever whoever was on whatever format we did it so uh yeah i'm, I'm very happy that the two of them listen on the day that comes out who have we got now? Okay, hold on. I need to switch. I need to switch it up to my phone because this was a comment and a question that I had to write down. Um, and where are we going? Okay. So yeah, this is this was kind of a longer one that I didn't write down, uh, and it was easier for me just to get. Okay, hold on. Why is that saying that? That's very upsetting. Um. Oh, it says session expired. Isn't that? Isn't that just typical? When you want it, when you want to find something, uh, session expired. Right. So I'm going into my, I'm just going into my inbox on the weekly weekly page, and here is. Uh, and you know what I didn't do with this? I didn't ask the person was it okay to use the name. So I'm not going to use the name because, um, that would be, it wouldn't be the right thing to do. So the person says I have a question with a long way. Of asking it so apologies in advance um, I read somewhere that strength training is supposed to have a direct effect on anxiety and mental health while we are lifting weight this is in quotes while we are lifting weights we are focused on the task at hand breathing proper form and movement therefore we cannot possibly pay attention to mentally generated stress we can only focus on the present end quote now I know that maybe struggling with getting form correct that the weight being too heavy may lead to getting anxious but overall it seems there is a strong connection with strength training and anxiety I know that with me, everything leaves my mind when I am lifting in CrossFit. However, if I am doing high cardio or in a competition where I'm lifting weights very fast, then my breathing gets affected big time, and because I have suffered panic attacks in the past, my body was relating to high cardio and breathlessness to a panic attack, and therefore I may start to feel one coming on. Unfortunately, this seems to lead to tears for me, so I have to try and regather myself. I learn to deal with them mentally, but it seems my body forgets that sometimes. It doesn't always happen to me, and I know cardio-based workouts are still very good for your mental health. Is this something you have ever experienced with working out, and the comparison of strength training as opposed to cardio-based workout in terms of anxiety? Thank you very much for your question. Um, so, uh, what the kind of notes that I had written down on it, um, where is it? 
Okay. So uh, weight training definitely involves more thoughts. So that tends to take anxiety um, or negativity away from me. Frustrations can come in. Like you said there, frustrations can come in with like, you know, the form and the weight. But that's not, you know, for me, a, a major problem uh, as it would be, say, a panic attack or, or having anxiety problems or neg negative thoughts. Um, so the same goes for jujitsu. Like when I'm... Um, when I'm kind of in the in the midst of the battle, like I said earlier on, I don't have time to think about anxiety or anything like that. And I think it's the same can be said for weights when I'm when I'm lifting. It's uh, look, I'm new enough to lifting, by the way, but I think I I think I can get in that moment, forget about everything as well. All I want to do is get the weight off the ground, and um, I, that, that for me is gold the only problem that i have with the weights is there's breaks in between so i mean it's it's a long drawn out process to lift the bar up and down and i'm maybe maybe anxious in between and that that's a problem whereas like in jiu-jitsu i don't really get a chance it's just bang 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 half an hour rolling and you're you're uh, you've forgotten all about your your worries uh i never i never had the problem with cardio right but um I know like the, the what you're saying about the breathing thing it's it's a trigger and it's uh it's like um it's almost like a PTSD thing which, which where you've had such a moment of you know uh, panic attacks in that situation before that it's a, that the, the very thought of that heavy breathing is bringing you back in um so I'm just trying to see what have I written down here because I did write stuff down and now my my writing is is what's doing me in here um so i what did i say i have never had the problem with cardio and panic attacks uh, because breathing is such a key element yep i got that part um i i don't know how i've ended up in this situation okay that's that goes there oh yeah so it's a key element when it comes to controlling anxiety and panic attacks yeah so what i'm saying is the breathing right so the breathing is what i was told to control your panic attacks, learn how to breathe, do breathing uh, techniques, all this kind of stuff. Now, if you can't breathe, how do you do it? Like, you know, that's the worst thing. And it's like memory and senses are such a big thing. So when like breathing heavily has caused attacks because it will always trigger them. Um, it's like it's like uh, hearing like a scary, the Halloween teen human always sets off something in me. And it's not PTSD, but it's certainly something that triggers. So when you're in the middle of uh, middle of an exercise and if you're in competition particularly if you're in training you can stop but if you're in competition you feel you have to keep uh, grinding and out that's tough like and like solutions are harder to come by but i think speaking to someone um i would advise actually speaking to someone like uh, uh, Teresa, who we had be, uh, who we had on back you know episode god i'm so bad at getting the episodes now right now um but yeah Teresa bulger who we spoke to who was a hypnotherapist who may be able to help you with that actually um because to do it on your own is difficult because it, that whole trigger effect you know that panic attack trigger um you know things trigger my panic attacks too and i only have to get too warm in a shop and i'm off so i leave the shop you know what i mean but if you're in the middle of a, a competition it's entirely separate so i would say talk to someone like uh, Teresa, who's a hypnotherapist who will be able to help you out on those things and um, you might only need one session with her that's the thing like Teresa spoke to me before when i did my session with her she said you may only need one session you may need a couple whatever it is she'll never tell you you need more than you do though and that's what's you know kind of honesty uh it goes a long way so i hope that kind of kind of answers your question i'm sorry if it doesn't but yeah it's it's i don't experience it with them um, with training as such but i experienced it heading into the gym so i don't know which is worse uh, so next up amanda asks who is your hero um you know besides my parents i'm not going to include my parents because um you know that would be uh i don't know people would say i was a cop out even though it's not it would be a correct answer for me but i'm not going to go there i think outside of people i know i think uh, john lennon uh, as a musician not so much as a person because he had some he did some dodgy stuff the dodgy things so uh, outside would be lennon and um, my grandfather would definitely be in there um he's just a, a one of the most genuine men you could meet funny uh always 
has been there for for me and my my brothers uh, we had such a good uh, relationship with him and with my grandmother um and we got to see them an awful lot growing up and you get to see what kind of a real uh real people um they were and are and uh yeah he'd be he'd be in there obama would have to be in there as well to be fair um so yeah i don't know if i could pick one to be honest there's a lot but my parents is the, is is the, is the answer i'd probably go with if if it wasn't if it didn't sound like a cop out but honestly it's not um thank you for the question amanda um my grandfather actually speaking of my grandfather why haven't you interviewed donald trump he says there you go there's a sense of humor there well do you know what i would interview donald trump and i do you know what i'd do then i practice my um my wrestling finishing move then the double leg the tr the darish joke there you go and then that would be a good day for me where are we uh in regards to time god we're 55 minutes i'm sorry i said i'd do this quicker um heather asks me what's your worst date i didn't really have a worst date i mean there was one day where the girl did that thing where you uh pretend you get a phone call and then you have to go so that was pretty crap there was another one with a, with a girl who I actually ended up going out with her for a while but uh on the first day and she was we were sitting in a pub and she was kind of swinging her hand at a little fly little bug that was buzzing around her head so i to help her out like swung and tried to get it as well when it came near me and then she questioned what i was doing and uh, she, i don't know if i could see someone who could just do that to a fly and i was like oh god what can you do How, you can't win but um, you know, we did go out for a while to be fair and i never went near a fly after until we we stopped seeing each other and then i went on a rampage when it came to flies um number where are we episode what question 32 Oshin, gym and anxiety how does it feel and what makes it worse um what's 32 can be rough um but it does leave uh you know in the middle of a workout like i was just answering the last couple uh, two questions ago about or a few questions ago about it does leave you know it's the build-up i take a bit of cbd going in there sometimes and it helps um so it does leave in the middle of a workout the feeling is kind of nerves you know wanting to avoid people worried about messing up my words which i'm very bad at when i'm nervous i jumble and stumble over all these kinds of words um you know another thing is like tiredness because if your anxiety really wipes you out so you never want to turn up to the gym tired and sometimes that does happen especially if i'm going in the evenings and it, that's tough um but like i say you do get that little bit of boost of energy when you're in the middle of a workout trust me um it's an accomplish like an accomplishment to get through it as well and that's another thing you've got to look at the end goal when it comes to even just one workout you've got to get in there get through get through it do your thing and when you leave that's take that as an accomplishment give yourself a pat on the back you're allowed to reward yourself you know um so where are we now okay let me see right we're going to go into breed's question breed is uh my sister-in-law who along with simon sent <laughs> sent his her messages uh a little bit behind but that's all right so could a could a pet help per, a person with their mental health problems uh for getting out of bed in the morning etc i would say yes i don't have a pet um as you know breed but it would definitely help with stress anxiety and loneliness those three in particular you know you see the people uh you you hear it in nursing homes and things like that for for stress and um, for anxiety that they bring in cats and they bring in dogs just dogs just for petting and it's just it's a nice i think it's quite nice it is something to get up for in the morning because it's a close bond that you you have and you've you have with the pet um and you know you know that you're its sole provider and you you need to be there for it all the time so i think with a dog or cat that would work whether it would work for a bird or a goldfish though is <laughs> it's another thing but i yeah i i do believe that a, a pet would help um i'm not going to get one myself i'll be honest to me i will go i will smash up everything i just said and say it would be too stressful especially if it was a puppy or something which would just be around go around destroying the place not a fan of cats as you know breed so i wouldn't be going uh, going for that um what is your favorite musical well I do i've watched a lot of musicals i kind of got into them i was doing this thing where i was trying to buy every best picture winner of all time and i think of only three left to get but obviously musicals have won and when i saw west side story it was i thought it was brilliant it's an amazing film so well done choreographed music everything is great about it even the colors the cinematography beautiful 
So, West Side Story would be the top, but I have a soft spot for Guys and Dolls. I don't think it's a brilliant film, but even just for Brando trying to sing, and the how uncomfortable does a man has a man ever looked singing? Um, if you want to see if you want to see someone squirm while they're trying to sing, have a look at Guys and Dolls. So, lads, here's another um, advert which I foolishly didn't get on the page um, quick enough. But it's for my, uh, it's for my buddy James Crowell, a uh, man who's doing a neuromuscular. Hang on, how have I lost the page? How do I keep losing pages in this? I have three copies in front of me. That's all. This is the worst ad in of all time. And I apologize, apologize, James. James is a neuromuscular therapist, and the treatments he provides are sports massage, a range of t techniques, cupping, dynamic or static. Um, he also uses instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Um, which is something I'd never seen before and he did it on my shoulder and it felt great on my neck so we would fully recommend James uh, he's a great lad and he um, he works there he works out of uh, Fusion he's got the proper bench there and he, uh, he he we would I went to see him and it was very relaxing did the cupping a, a new experience for me you know support your local people and uh James is out there, and if you feel stressed about this whole thing that we're going through at the moment, how about you get yourself something to look forward to and book yourself in? And uh, you can find James on Instagram at Crowell17. Crowell is C R A U G H W E L L 17 underscore. His phone number is 089 402 3117. Give him a buzz, organize him a, a session, and uh, you will not regret it, lads. So, Nicola asks, if you could listen to one album only, what would it be? Revolver by the Beatles, all the time. It's the greatest album ever made. I don't need to go any deeper than that. Kaylee uh, asks, did you ever envisage the podcast being as successful? Um, I suppose defining success is difficult, isn't it? Um, look, it, it has been amazing to, to hear the feedback um, and to learn new things each week off our guests and to know what it has helped some people that's incredible that that was you know i really think that was the whole point I, i'm gonna come to that later on the, the episode but yeah like the fact that i've helped some people is pretty um, amazing and kind of intense actually when i think about it uh, i didn't see the success but i believe it to be a success because of you know these things that alone is enough for me that it, it helps some people uh, people tune in every Wednesday. That's crazy, you know. The people take the time out, and I don't mean just my parents, but I mean like, you know, people. Some people that I don't really know are tuning in. That's it's just bizarre. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really happy with it. Uh, it's going very well. I can't ask for much more than that. So Mark asks, biggest learning experience from the podcast so far. Um. So. I, I don't know, I like, I think, I see how supportive communities are, you know, um, in creating, like, you know, through honesty, help, and, and like, being genuine. I think I've learned that, you know, as, uh, in groups of people, uh, we can be so powerful, you know, and I think the mo the movement of, you know, we'll say a hundred people, for example, maybe a hundred people listen to the, the podcast, um, you know, say if it's a hundred a week, it's more than hundred a week, but just average it in hundred, right? How, how powerful that is, um, to get the message out there, how powerful it is for, to hear back from people going, God, I listened to your podcast, it was great, you know, and I, I, I didn't believe about such and such, and that guest was brilliant. That's what I'm learning, is like the strength of people in numbers, and how, and also how strong one voice can be, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the guests, and uh, that's, that's a huge thing and i guess i also learned that i can actually do something that's uh that is um of value to some people i think that's great um i'm very uh i'm very proud of that um my mom asked what are your strengths and how have you helped your how have they helped your mental health well i kind of i put down smart and then i put in brackets ish um i, I put down not afraid to share in brackets now at least and I think an empath empathetic um so yeah i think they're they're three things that have have helped um 
I mean, the podcast would be terrible if I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> you know, but I think, yeah, all those three things and like being able to be have the courage to ask for help because I think everybody thinks it's it's weak it's not it's it's a very brave thing to do to ask for help but you've all got it in you and I think uh, I think I was able to look things up you know the smartish things comes into it when I was kind of able to look things up see that I needed to do things better in certain ways and in certain aspects of my life and I did them and they are helping I still need to do more I still need to like get better I still need to continue to kind of push for for you know a, a stability that's going to last you know a long time and uh, i will keep doing it but yeah they're they're the three i, I wrote down anyway uh jer asked why do you think someone with anxiety like yourself loves the horror genre so much well escapism is an obvious one um you get engrossed in something which doesn't mo does remove anxiety it's the same as jujitsu and weightlifting all that it's all the same thing it's all getting completely taken out of yourself um and it backs up there's there's an article that Jar sent me in from the Huffing, Huffington Post and it talked about how horrors back up your anxiety that the world is a scary place you know and that's a kind of interesting you know take on it um so I talked about this a bit a few episodes back and about how my reaction to the pandemic might have been more relaxed than I thought it would be but it's because of I've been preparing myself for this for years now and now that's come around and like well i told you you'd had stuff to be worried about but you wouldn't listen to me and it's an interesting thing and i think that comes comes to the territory with horror where you're thinking you know what you're in for the bad things are going to happen in this but that's the world isn't it so that's why i guess i like it i'm escape there's a bit of escapism there's also a bit of haha i told you so <laughs> kind of thing about it um azura asks three fictional characters you relate to and, and why i think i found this quite a difficult question so napoleon dynamite <laughs> Um, Felix Unger from uh, from the Odd Couple, Jack Lemon played him. Um, you know he pulled he, like Felix Unger is the gassed kind of idea that he put like he pulls a muscle in his back trying to jump out a window, right? He's a neurotic, obsessive, compulsive nut, constantly complaining about dirt and displaced items, and he's wary of fun. I mean that's that's my uh, that's my Tinder profile. <laughs> so. Um, then we have uh, Jim from American Pie, but I haven't done the I've never done the apple pie thing before. I, I trust me on that. I've never done it. I shouldn't have said that afterwards because then it makes it sounds like I did do it, and I'm just really wanting not to believe it. So um, I need to ask: Do you need? Do we need to train people to critically analyze information that we read or hear on social media and news stations? I would say absolutely. Um, critical thinking seems to be vanishing and only used in academia at the moment. I've written this down, by the way. It's all black or white now. If younger people could think critically about how they see online the world you... What? They see the online world, um, you'd be entire, entirely changed over the next 20 to 30 years. Will it happen? Um, well, that didn't make any sense, that sentence. If younger people could think critically about what they see online, the world would be entirely changed over the next 20 years. Will it happen? Unlikely. That made a bit more sense. The lack of critical thinking when it comes to news stories shows in the States now and what people will or won't believe, even when the facts are right in front of them. It's one way or the other, now placed in the middle for... What? It's one way or the other, now... Middle for critical evaluation. Yeah, I think uh, what I was trying to say, without absolutely butchering the three or four sentences there, yeah, if they could critically analyze the things that they're seeing now in 20 or 30 years that the world would be a entirely different place i think it'd be a better place but the, they're not being shown that and they're not going to be shown that and news stories are you know everybody's the easiest thing for people to say now is all oh, fake news fake news you know and it's it's lame you know but that's what it is and um the facts are right there in front of them and they won't believe it uh so it's like black or white with people now and i think yeah critical evaluation would be it would be brilliant but it's not going to happen unfortunately anita um but we can still do it and we can still try and pass it on to people but nobody you know there's not going to be any teaching of it in schools or anything you know put it that way um martin asks who would you who would be your ideal guest both alive or dead uh, alive barack obama um, for obvious reasons, I've always been a big admirer since I saw him on the RT News back when they were like, this guy could be running for president. And people laughed. 
uh, and dead would be Richard Pryor because he'd be funny and he, how would you not like have to have Richard Pryor on your podcast you know imagine how funny he'd be he'd be great and he's a smart guy and it's such a mad story if you read about Richard Pryor read his uh, autobiography or his bi biographies about him and it's just a crazy crazy life so yeah it would be Richard um oh no I'm after writing down a number Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know who I know who asked this. I didn't write down a name. Mark asked, "When you are having a bad day, walk or talk?" Um, uh, for me, talk first. I think you can do like talk. I know you're just saying or either or. Ideally, both. But I think a talk with a loved one will be more beneficial in the long run. Um, a walk is a kind of a quick fix. If you get out in the morning for a walk, it's great because I do a running and it helps an awful lot. But I think if I'm really being weighed down by something, I would suggest. Uh, uh, a long talk with a, with a loved one will definitely get you through my mom asks favorite author of fiction short stories and non-fiction uh okay so i wrote a few down here fiction long form i have cormac mccarthy don delilo john steinbeck and lena shriver uh short stories i have raymond carver and alice monroe the two greatest short story writers of all time and non-fiction david foster wallace naomi klein Joan Didion and Hunter S. Thompson, more for his political writings than some of his mad ramblings. But um, yeah, they're they're my list. So if anyone wants to check out their stuff, but if I was to, if I was actually to pick anyone out of that for someone to go and read right now in this in this uh, level five thing, I'd read Raymond Carver. His short stories. It doesn't matter what collection you pick up. He's just incredible writer. And like I talked about the drama earlier on. He writes about things that we've all been through and things that we've seen and he writes about them so brilliantly um so yeah we're nearly there folks um where are we mark asks one book everyone should read uh well i just read one non-fiction one called men who hate women by laura bates and i think every man needs to read it um every woman should read it it's a brilliant book but i think every man needs to read it and see the crap that is put out there in the world by horrible horrible men um online bullying forums all those kind of things that make the world a pretty horrible place for some women uh go and read it cop on if you're not doing it it's fine but i mean try and teach you know if you've got a son or sons at home try and teach them not to be doing this crap and try and get it out of the way laura bates is a great writer the stuff that she puts up there that she has been sent online um death threats and rape threats and all these kind of stuff it's just sickening it's a horrible book to get through because of all that but it's a brilliantly written educational piece of work that you, everybody should read particularly men so i'm going to say that but i will say if i'm going to go with fiction by the way uh mark i would say to kill a mockingbird it's my favorite book but i it, it, has, it has so many life lessons in there packed into it there's a reason it's so renowned it's a beautiful beautiful book and uh i absolutely love it and it's it's i read it in school imagine something good that came from it i know but <laughs> yeah but i i that that's such a great book um and uh, nicola asks favorite episode so far this is actually nicola you asked two horrid questions but really good ones but yeah two that were very very difficult for me to answer and i I wasn't going to answer this one. I wasn't going to write. I wasn't going to take it down and uh, put it in the episode. But you know what? I had to think about it. And again, like I said about you know answering one, getting one answer to a question like this. I I wrote out three, okay, and then I wrote some honourable mentions. But the thing is, like, I haven't had a bad guest. How has that happened? Well, in episode forty, I think it makes it about twenty five guests, twenty six guests. Um, a couple of them are on twice. How have I not had one bad guest yet? Like, how lucky is that? I'm just going to take a drink of water before this question. I'm nervous. But I don't understand how we've gotten away with it. I haven't had someone sitting across from me where I'm like, oh, this is so hard. How am I going to get answers out of this person? Do you know, it's never come to that. But I'm going to answer with three and then I'm going to give some honorable mentions because there was, mo there was you know, there's some of those moments when I, when I was watching it or listening to it and I'm interviewing the person and going, or this this one is going to mean a lot to people or this one means a lot to me for any reason so um the three i've had uh episode 19 
Simon Wheatley, whoever he is. No, my brother. Um, I love him a lot. He's he's so he, like he's such a nice guy to get on with. He and I'm not just saying that because he's my brother. He's the most lay, one of the most laid back people. So I knew when he was coming over that I had there wasn't going to be any worries. I didn't have to stress about anything. I wasn't panicking about sound, even though I was really worried about the guest and I was pretending it was about the sound, whatever. Uh, we had a great chat and I enjoyed it when we were doing it. But afterwards, when I listened back to it, I realized what a good episode it was. And it got a lovely response from people. And a lot of people listened to it, actually. And I suppose it was because it was my, my brother coming on. But he, um, yeah, he was great. I love the way he talks about Breed and uh jessica and, uh, and adam is his uh, kids and uh, i can't express how fortunately i have i am right to to have them in the background right because through the years when i've been kind of struggling they've always kind of added me in and things you know they've involved me in things and uh that I don't feel like I'm trying to squeeze myself in on their lives, you know? It's like they invite me to do things or they'll do things for me. If I ask Simon to bring me shopping, he'll bring me shopping. Simon lives miles away, do you know what I mean? Like, But he'll come all the way in and he'll usually have his daughter Jessica with him and I get to see her then, it's great. But it's just that idea like when to have him coming on, I bought, I always wanted him on and I wasn't sure if he was going to come on and when he when he agreed to it it was it was class and yeah he I look if I'm going to have a favor I'm going to say it's Simon but people are going to think that's a cop out so that's why I wrote down three um my second was uh episode 17 Josh makes his second appearance um look Josh is this this was this episode was the first back after the lockdown right so one that was special for that reason two because I know Josh about three years and we've become like best buds in that time like you know um you know we train together in infusion that's how we met but we train in his house as well we have some mats there uh i can talk i can talk about crap with him i can talk about intelligent uh, su uh t intelligent subjects with him i can slag him off he slags me off it's just one of those uh relationships and i get on so well with him so when he came on the show again he had been on before when he came on this time he wore his air jordans even though they're absurd looking he wore his air jordans he um he we just chatted about stuff we chatted about um the last dance you know the the michael jordan bulls documentary for a while and about the psychology of it and that that's what josh is into he's into psychology and things like that and, and thinking about things and looking into things and it was just a really fun episode and when i listened back to it again there was something very it's very heartwarming about it and i, I loved having him on uh, and three was uh, was Ginny Breslin. Um, I didn't know Ginny. I had seen a video. If people have listened to the episode, I had seen Ginny um, on a video when she was doing Wimp to Warrior, and she spoke about her pro uh, the problems she had. Um, you know, uh, she spoke about losing her mom. She spoke about you know being a single mother to her little lad uh, Jody, and it just I I thought I'd love to get her on, but I didn't know her, so I had to send her like this random text on Instagram, and like Anne will tell you, I'm like stalking people on Instagram now because I want to get people on, um, and she was so good, she said, oh, "Come on, like," but I'm nervous, so we we pushed it back a little, and Kieran was on, uh, her coach, um, the, the coach over in you know SBG Tullamore, uh, and he. <laughs> She said, okay, I'm ready to come on now. And she came on. We chatted for ages. I didn't know her. She was the, e so easy to get on with. But I guess what I took so much from that, I loved having the, uh, a chat with her. It was great. And she was so open. And that's the whole point, right? But then the guest goes away. And I'm, you know, mixing down the, uh, putting the music on it, send it off to John. John does it up, puts it up. And then I'm listening back to it. And I realize, like, this is a great episode. The, like, the honesty... The rawness of, of certain parts of it um you know her talking about her love for crossfit all those kind of things but you know what really made a difference on that episode for me was the support and the love that she got from her family um i said to jenny she uh, jenny she must come from the nicest family in the world they were like this how supportive they were when they listened to it um uh you know jenny's sister sent a lovely message to me there recently uh, about how much she enjoyed it uh, shared a thing on Instagram then yesterday it was about uh, what a brilliant not only uh, did, see this is the thing not only did she put up um, it was Sarah but not only did she put up how much she loved the episode 
she also put up two other episodes she loved and like you know tagged them like that's that's class um so i've still been in contact with Ginny since and uh yeah Ginny uh, number three honorable mentions i have to pick honorable mentions because like i said there's so many like um look i can pick out i could pick out Ther- Teresa's one i could pick out anita's one both anita's um martin he's the first guest he made it very easy for me in the first episode because martin can talk away so to me it was like oh this is grand hopefully they're all like this um he was my first guest you know third episode the first person to come on uh grace was so informed about uh, informative about things that were new to me you know like uh, breastfeeding but also about the trauma she had in the hospital after she gave birth to her first son um uh, michelle who was on last week her, the first zoom episode how she was able to calm me down and uh, you know i didn't need to worry about it and it worked out and then of course how could i not go by without kieran davern's episode someone in the jiu-jitsu world who i look up to and many people do black belt professional grappler such a nice fella came over he would have stayed here for two hours three hours and he was in the middle of training for this his polaris event by the way which the his which the ireland and in, uh, ireland and britain won by the way but he was a uh, he was so good and he but he, like i said he was there and he was an absolutely brilliant guest um i i've won more I suppose I had a question for me and it was like, why did I do this podcast? And people have still asking me, like, why did you start this podcast? And it's like, it, it's changed over the, the time, like, you know, over the time since I started. And I don't know anymore. I don't, like, did I want to highlight mental health? Um, was it to come out with my shell a bit more? Uh, meet To meet more people? Um, to learn about things that I had no idea about? Um, to better myself? I don't know. Maybe it's all of those things, you know? maybe it is i i it's it could be a, a mixture of of all the above and if it is isn't that great like that i'm still here we've done for with episode 40 we've got an actress lauren co on next we've got you know ashley daly coming up we've got painters and all sorts coming up and i'm not going to tell you who they are now but down the line you'll see but i just yeah i think it's to there's there's many reasons why i did it but look at the community that's been created over like that's that's pretty amazing that's that's kind of the thing that gets to me the most i think it gets me in a good way that look at the community that we we are creating here and we're we're, we should all support each other and that's what it's all about and folks that was 50 questions in in the end um thank you very much like for sending them in um a few i got through them uh but you've been brilliant they were brilliant questions i sorry i didn't get to every one of them um you excelled yourselves <laughs> but uh yeah there was more but i did everybody who asked a question did get a question put in there so i uh, i'm hope, hoping that they were the correct responses and i'm sorry i couldn't answer them all professionally <laughs> but um listen thank you very much to john to uh to his family to megan to jur my mom my dad my grandfather all naked appearances um subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't done so already we're on facebook instagram twitter you know follow us on all those things for extra bit of uh bit of gossip um we're in the west mead this week actually uh which is uh, have a read of that and share it around if you would we're on spotify apple anchor google podcasts podcasts etc as i said thank you to all the people who sent the messages to all the people out there listening and to every single one who has supported us throughout who has followed us who has liked pages who has subscribed to youtube the fact of the matter is, and I've said this already, if it was just me, if none of you were here, if none of you had decided to jump on this and be supportive, it would just be me talking in this room now with 50 questions that I've set for myself, rambling, like a, I don't know what, I won't say it. It's a mental health podcast, I'm not going to use any slurs, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm going to go, that's an hour and a half episode, so I hope you liked it. Um, listen, have a lovely week. Um, oh, we, uh, let's hope that the US make the correct decision. Let's hope by Sunday I'll be chatting about that. And next week we will have Lauren Cohen, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So, everybody, take care. Bye.